So here is the arrival of my um, Sinclair ZX Spectrum Vega uh, that I sponsored via a Kickstarter program uh, a couple of months ago. Should have been here a couple of months, about in May, uh, but it's arrived now. So we're August the 10th, something like that. Absolutely fantastic. Here we've got the packaging of the unit on the front, the PEGI rating of 7, stating it's a game console as well. As you can see the sticker there, um, there's say 1000 preloaded classic games. Also, uh, if you look around as well, that is a limited edition, first ever production run of a, th of a thousand. Again, nice simplistic, you've got the, the classic Spectrum um, logo on the bottom right hand side. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unbox it and see exactly what we've okay, got. We've got the outer sleeve um, off the unit now and we're presenting with a white box. Open the white box and we've got some destructions. Put that to one side and here is the unit. A uh, nice small unit. I'm going to pull that out of the box. Okay, and have a look at what exactly we get in there. So put the box to one side. So, first impressions, a very light unit, um, it's about the size of a mobile phone. Uh, you can see we've got the, the copyright uh, notice on the back, if the autofocus finally gets in, in stage. Um, very light, very lightweight, the buttons feel very much like um, a Spectrum, if I was to be critical, perhaps not as rubbery as a Spectrum, but that's okay. Um, and then we've got the D-pad here on the left-hand side. So again, we've got Sinclair and a ZX Spectrum Vega. And we've got buttons labelled A, B, C and M. And the buttons at the top, which are rubbery, F for fire, are the two key. We've got the exclamation mark 1. And we've got 2 with an at symbol. And select the S key with not on that. Got a USB uh, adapter for power and we've got the standard um, composite connectors yellow, white and red. Nice long cable as well. And now onto the instructions. So Okay, um, quite a big booklet, 12 pages, uh, sections on setting up your Vega, um, USB for power, and we've got um, obviously the connections for video, uh, how to do it via a SCART, we need a SCART adapter for that, I've got several of those, but the TV I've got is um, Samsung Smart TV, 48 inch, so we've got all the adapters on that. Um, there's details in there as well that if you want to switch between PAL and NTSC. Then there's a section on getting to know your Vega and I'll cover this a bit later when I actually get it and plug it in. But it does mention as well that there is an SD card slot here at the bottom of the unit so that's quite interesting. And where the power indicators are as well. Um, auxiliary buttons here which are the ABC buttons that we mentioned earlier. And then the main buttons and a reset button in the middle. So very well designed, quite nicely thought out. Uh, it goes through the details and, and choosing games to play. Playing a game, uh, what to do with games and many actions um, and so forth. So what we're going to do, we're going to get in there now. Uh, we're going to plug it in and we're going to see what we, we can do and find out. And I shall make a video uh, of how to do that. So... This would be quite exciting. Back to our childhood. Okay. Uh, so we've got on the back of the TV, we've got a um, bit of light there. We've got the USB for the Vega unit. And then I've got the yellow into video and the white and the red component um, cables plugged in for the audio. And I disconnected my Wii just for the. demonstration purposes. I managed to get so, this on now um, and we'll do something with the light in a minute because it's reflecting off the screen. So what we thought is is that this TV is fitted with two 
um, USB sockets on it. One socket um, is labelled USB power and then the other one is then labelled for um, a camera to be fitted to the Samsung TV. Uh, so as you can hear there's a bit of music going on. So what we've seen is is that there's a hum out of the main USB socket so I've plugged it into another socket uh, at the back. No hum, no lines across the screen so the instructions also do state that if you do get um, some humming or some crossbars across the screen that that one particular USB port is not supplying enough power. So we've got power to the Vega as you can see something has just happened to it and it has just crashed. Uh, I'll be back in a moment. Find out what's um, what we've done is I've plugged it in now via a detachable USB mobile phone charging plug. Uh, seems to be running okay now so um, a little tip, perhaps not use the USB socket on the back of your TV. So as you can see the Sinclair uh, Vega does come with some preloaded games and by selecting Let's go for 3D tanks, or say adventure games, that'd be quite good. Ooh, what's this? Arcade games, Bomb Under Parliament, Harvesting the Moon, Legacy for Alaric, Serpent's Tale, Adventure in Bristol. Wow, well, you've gone for it, yeah. Um, let's see what else we've got. Alien Research Center, April the 7th. Nothing springs to mind, Arnold the Adventurer, I vaguely remember that. Um, let's see what else we got. Adventure games. Let's go for 3D tanks. Okay, so to load, we press the select button. It gives us uh, a look at what keys we've got to use on the Vega. And then press a button to start the game. So let's press a button. And there you go, DK Tronics tanks. Gives us the information. And let's play a one for play one player. And there it is. Look at that. Quite difficult to aim as well when. Um, oh, we should get in with this now. Oh, nearly. And again. So quite good. It was a glancing blow. And they're throwing stuff back at us. So, um, first impressions, yeah, very good. Not without teething troubles in regards to that, but it's all displayed uh, and explained in the um, instructions as well. I'm just a bit too eager. I've got in there uh, and had a good look. Um, and then, you know, there is the Vega all powered on with the power button glowing away. Hey, fantastic. More videos to follow. Um, discovered that by going left and right on the keypad we can skip through all the other games as well so a for arcade games but you know we can get some more games on there so i've gone through now and i've had a good look <clears throat> um nightlife is there um we've got lifeboat a lot of light, limelight lo loads of midnight part one which i think might have been a spoof on the lords of midnight i can't quite remember uh, but we've got quite a few other ones there as well, like Meltdown, Magma Man, Matchmaker, Nightwing, uh, Number Six in the Village. Never heard of that one. Um, so, quite a lot of, of of games there that I've not heard from, and I was quite the, you know, avid player of of the spectrum. So, Quest for the Holy Joystick. Again, I'm sure that was one of the spoof games they did. So, looking through now. For something that I uh, I recognise, Ship of Doom. That's a very old um, text adventure, if I remember rightly. Um, we we'll have to go online and have a look at see what other games they've got on there. 
so we've selected a uh, nightlife and adventure game um, okay and it's a virtual keyboard within the game to play this and that's been something that I've been thinking about how they're gonna do it so uh, we'll press a button to start um, <laughs> nightlife quest for the holy socks who knows eh so we've touched the key and nothing's happening aha there we go uh, pause game save game restore game M return press the M key C for keyboard ah I see that's how you get all the different uh, key selections so playing adventure games might be a bit of a chore but we'll try that later so let's restart on to the arcade list as well and there's a couple of games that I recognize in particularly Jetpack classic game let's load it up and see what we got so we got the thrust is up left right and fire is F okay so let's, let's get started and see what it looks like oh, it's just absolutely fantastic this was done on the Xbox uh, not so long ago and it's been re-released on the Xbox one now and a rare replay as well so ultimate now being um, rare so we're gonna start the game um, with S there you go let's see if we can fantastic so I've got a second pair of hands in now I've got my daughter Caitlin who's holding the camera while I do the second level which I always found a very difficult level game over oh no what am I gonna do let's start again so here we go with jetpack uh, the idea is to fly around pick up the pieces of the ship on the first level um, build the ship pick up any goodies as well not getting killed, building up your score, then pick up the fuel, and then put the fuel over the ship, fill the ship full of fuel, fly to the next level. After a few levels, um, you'll then get a different ship to build. It's quite easy to control the Vega, to be fair. Uh, the D-pad works well. For those of you who remember playing it on the Spectrum, unless you had a Kempston joystick, it was quite difficult. So we're halfway there now, we're going to get that um, gem down to the middle position, pick the fuel up, back in. Of course with this level, um, I'm not going to say it because I'll probably get killed, is that the um, aliens moving horizontally across the screen, uh, perhaps at a slight angle as well, it's quite easy to... Um, avoid getting shot on this level. Other levels, however, are a bit difficult. So, that's level one then. Okay, now this one, they, these people, uh, these aliens, tend to swarm quite a bit. So, here we go. Of course, we haven't got to build a ship this time. All we've got to do is collect the fuel prevent from getting killed so the aliens are a bit more random this time so we've got to be very careful how we do it okay a fuel again the Vegas performing very well on this game really good um, Amazing I haven't died on jetpack yet. Just goes to show sometimes you just don't know. And here we go into level three. So more videos and more games later.